Hello there, physical science students. This is Ms. Ruark, and this is Vodcast 7.1, where we're talking about solutions. Okay, a quick review um, from a couple of chapters ago where we talked about mixtures. Okay, so a mixture can, can, be, can be combined and separated by physical means. Okay, so you can combine it and separate it physically. Um, there are two types of mixtures. Um, there's one that's not uniform in com composition, so it's not the same throughout, and that would be a heterogeneous mixture. Okay. Um, heterogeneous mixtures can be separated into a couple different types. You can have suspensions where the particles are large enough to be filtered out. Uh, mixtures are going to Oops, sorry. These mixtures settle into layers because the particles are heavy enough and large enough that they can settle. An example of that suspension would be this um, Italian dressing right here. Um, in a suspension, you can have liquid solid mixtures, so um, a liquid with solid particles in it, or you can have a liquid with liquid in it. So this would be an example of oil and water. Okay. Uh, you can also have a colloid where the particles are small and they cannot be filtered out of the suspension. An example of some colloids would be gels or foams. Okay, so shaving gel, uh, shaving gel um, um, whipped cream, examples, um, clouds, milk. Okay, those are all examples of colloids. Um, the particles are small and you can't filter them out. So if you tried to run it through Excuse me. If you tried to run it through a filter, um, it, the particles are so small they would go through the filter. Okay. Um, and then you have a homogeneous mixture or homogeneous mixture, and that is going to be one that is uniform in composition or it's the same all the way throughout. We call those solutions. Okay. There are two parts to a solution. There is the solute which is the substance that is being dissolved and then we have the solvent which is the substance in which dissolves the solute okay so everybody knows Kool-Aid let's talk about Kool-Aid in Kool-Aid you have the Kool-Aid packet right you have the Kool-Aid packet everybody likes cherry I hope so we've got cherry Kool-Aid and then you've got a container of sugar Hopefully you make it by the packet, so it's one cup, but I know you guys don't, so let's say there's two cups of sugar. And then you have a container of water. Okay, These three containers right here, which one is the solvent? The one that does the dissolving. Okay, Well, that would be the water. The water is going to be your solvent. Okay, And then the solute is anything that's being dissolved. Well, you've got two things being dissolved here. You've got the Kool-Aid and you have the sugar. So you've got two solutes and one solvent. There can be things besides um, that, that are solvents that are not water. Um, oil is an example of a solvent that's not water. Um, I mean pretty much anything that can dissolve something else can be a solvent. Okay, examples of solutions. Here we have salt water. Okay, in salt water you've got salt, a solid, that's being dissolved in water, which is a liquid. Okay, so those are type of solutions where you have a solid dissolved in a liquid. Okay, here we have soda, and in this soda we have um, a bunch of things mixed in there, but you have carbonation. Right? Carbonation is a gas, and that's mixed in water, which is your solvent, which is a liquid. Okay, so a gas mixed in with a liquid. And then here we have two solids two metals for an alloy, two metals um, that are mixed together um, and these would be solids but you can't just take those two solids and mix them together because it doesn't work really well does it? Um, so how do we get them to mix together? We change them into liquids and then we mix them together. <laughs> Alright, how do substances dissolve? Well we have this saying that says like dissolves like. Uh, what does that mean? Well, you have a polar molecule and you have nonpolar molecules. Polar molecules are ones that are partially charged 
and they become partially charged because one of the elements that's in the molecule or one or more of the elements in the molecule is a big bully and it holds things a little bit closer. So here's an example of a water molecule. Here's a water molecule. Okay, you have hydrogen and you have oxygen. Um, out of these elements or out of these mo these atoms right here, oxygen is um, oxygen's a bit of a bully. Yeah. Um, these elements, because it's in a covalent bond, this is a covalent bond, they are actually sharing these electrons. Okay, so they're sharing these electrons. But oxygen, like I said, is a bit of a bully, and so oxygen holds those electrons closer to it than hydrogen does. So the electrons are actually kind of sitting here and not closer to hydrogen. And when they sit here and there's not an even sharing between the two, that makes it so that oxygen has a slightly negative charge, whereas um, hydrogen is going to have a slightly positive charge. And yes, I meant to draw that as almost an 8 without the little top part. That's the small delta sign. Um, so it has a partially negative charge and a partially positive charge. This makes it polar. Okay. If it's a nonpolar molecule, they have no partial charges, which means they're equal sharing of those electrons. All right, so polar molecules are going to be things like water or anything that water can dissolve. Okay, nonpolar molecules, anything that water does not dissolve or mix well with. So oil, oil is a great example of a nonpolar molecule. Um, and in the picture here to the right, you have water on the bottom and you have oil on the top and we all know that water and oil don't mix and the reason for that is because water has a partial charge and not, um, oil has no partial charge so it water can't pull that um, the oil molecules apart water and they, they just don't attract to each other because there's no charges there okay what's a way that we can speed up dissolving well you can do it a number of ways. The first way you can do it is by increasing the surface area. You can increase the surface area by crushing or grinding up a solid. And when you do that, you end up, if we had a block here, we have this surface area here that the water can react with or that the, the solvent can react with. But if we take this and we split it up into two smaller cubes, we now have more surface area. We have twice the amount of surface area. Well, what if we were to take that and break it up into a bunch of little pieces? All right. So now we have even more surface area because we have the surface of every single one of these little pieces here. And that's a way more surface area for our solvent to react with or to collide with or to mess with. So it allows for more collisions between the solvent molecules and the solute molecules. All right, another way that we can in, um, speed up dissolving is to increase the temperature. As we increase the temperature, the kinetic energy will increase. And if the kinetic energy increases, the molecules are moving faster. And this is going to allow for more collisions. And more collisions means more reactions and more dissolving. And they're going to actually transfer more energy because they have more energy to transfer. And then the third way is to agitate the solution. So, so to stir it up or to shake it. That's going to speed up that rate of dissolving. Okay, what does the solute affect? Why would you put the solute in there in the first place? Well, it changes the physical properties of the pure solvent. Okay, so some examples here. Um, in the winter time up north when it snows and when there's ice storms you can see a lot of trucks out on the road that look like this and what it's doing is it's salting the roads so if you see this stuff right here it's coming out it's salting the roads okay. and what does salting the roads do well they put the salt on the roads when it temperatures are going to drop to keep the, the ice from forming well how does that work well, ice is water, and water freezes at 32 degrees Celsius or, or 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius. 
Well, if you take salt and add it to the water, now you don't have salt, any, or you don't have water anymore. You have salt water. And salt water has a slightly lower freezing point than water. Sorry, my nose is clogged up. It has a slightly lower freezing point than water, which means that it's not going to freeze it at zero degrees Celsius. It's not going to freeze at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. It's going to freeze at a lower temperature. So that temperature can actually drop lower and not freeze up the water on the road, and then we won't have as many accidents. All right. Um, another thing that you do is over here, we put this gooky stuff in our car. Right, we put this gooky stuff in our car in our radiators, and this stuff is called antifreeze. Sometimes it's green, sometimes it's orange. Um, I'm sure there are other colors. It's put in there to keep the car from overheating. It's also put in there to keep all of the liquids from freezing, because you don't want your car to freeze up in the winter time. You don't want your car to overheat. When, it's, when you're driving it or in the summertime. Okay, so what does it do? Well, it has a higher boiling point and a lower freezing point than the water that's in there already. So when you put that in there, it keeps your engine running properly. It keeps it from overheating when you're using it and from overheating in the summertime. And it keeps it from freezing during the wintertime. All right. Um, solubility. What is solubility? It's the maximum amount of solute that can be dissolved in 100 grams of solvent. And solubility, we can talk about it in terms of concentration. So concentration, when we say concentration, is the amount of solute dissolved in a solution. Okay, you can have a concentrated solution and a dilute solution. Concentrated solution is going to have um, a large amount of solute dissolved in it, and a dilute solution is going to have um, a small amount of solute dissolved in it. Okay, you can also have um, three ways that you can talk about your solution in terms of saturation. Okay, so an unsaturated solution is one that has less solute than the maximum that can be dissolved in it. Right? Um, a saturated solution is one that has um, a lot of solute in it and it's kind of in equilibrium at the time. And then you can have a super saturated solution. A super saturated solution holds more solute than it normally would at a lower temperature. So to put these into perspective, if we were making Kool-Aid and we made it by the packet instructions with one cup of sugar. It would be an unsaturated solution. The reason it would be unsaturated is because you can add more sugar to it and it would still dissolve. Okay. If you make Kool-Aid the way that you normally make, or that, that kids make Kool-Aid with two cups of sugar or more, and all the sugar starts to clump at the bottom because it won't dissolve anymore, that is now a saturated solution. It can't hold any more solute. All right, and then the super saturated solution is if we took that Kool-Aid with all the sugar clumped at the bottom and we heated it up. When we heat it up, it's going to allow that um, that extra sugar to dissolve. Once that extra sugar dissolves, you let it cool slowly. Okay, now it this wouldn't work with this because it's um, this is just an example, so it won't work. Don't do this at home. Okay, if you were to let it cool slowly, it would look like regular Kool-Aid, right? So this right here looks like a clear solution. It's been heated, it's got extra solute in it, but what they're going to do is take this one crystal and drop it in. When they take that one crystal and drop it in, it starts to form crystals automatically. It crystallizes automatically, and that is a super saturated solution. Okay, so if, one last thing. If we increase the temperature of a substance, the solubility will increase. Okay. If we increase the temperature, we'll be able to increase the solubility of a substance. All right. I think that's it. Yep. Okay. I'll see you in class.